Yesterday, in a colorful ceremony in Kabarak, Daniel Toretich Arab Moy completed his final journey. As expected, from a function of this magnitude, there was plenty of drama. Embattled Nairobi Senator Mike Sonko got ejected from the main dais. And there was a scuffle, yeah, when some people huh, tried to stop Oburu Odinga, brother to Raila Odinga, from accessing the main dais. And then sadly, yeah, there's somebody who didn't actually make it to the funeral. Cabinet Minister without portfolio and Jubilee Secretary General Raphael Tuju was involved in a very unfortunate accident here yeah, on his way to the funeral. His driver here yeah, was lucky. He only had a fractured hand. But the driver of the Matatu that collided with Raphael Tuju's Prado is still on life support in hospital. Raphael Tuju himself yeah, is in stable condition but in the intensive care unit of Karen Hospital in Nairobi. I'll of course keep you updated on that accident as I get information because there are a few very strange things yeah, about that accident. Anyway, all in all, it was a very colorful and grand send-off yeah, of the poor boy from Sacho and to be more specific from a place called Kabartonjo, yeah, who ended up becoming President of the Republic of Kenya for 24 long years. You know, yeah, if you're listening to this channel today and you're down, maybe even out, let me encourage you yeah, with some thoughts that were passing through my mind yeah, as I took in this funeral. If in 1949 somebody had approached Toretich Moy and shown him glimpses yeah, of his own funeral where he was given so much honor, what do you think Moy would have said? <laughs> He'd have probably said, Mimi Staki Kuingia Jeshi. Or he might have said something like, Wacha Kudanganya Mimi. And that's just the thing about life. Yeah, you don't know what tomorrow has for you. Because as we said yeah, in the video I did on Moi's life, the day that some Zungu sent for Moi, he was already married with children. He had already settled down and accepted the life ahead of him, not knowing that destiny was about to come calling and take his life in a totally different direction. So don't give up. And also, watch a mother out. Yeah, don't look down on people and assume that they're nothing and that they'll continue to be nothing. <laughs> You're not God. Now, Moe's send-off, in my opinion, was a send-off, full send-off, that a sitting head of state would be given. And not a former head of state who left power over 18 years ago in a very elaborate ceremony where the Kenya Defense Forces were fully in charge, Moy's remains were taken into State House, Nairobi. And a brief service with the family and with President Huru Kenyatta present was held. And then his remains yeah, left State House with full military escort. Yeah, and then he was flown to his Kabrak home where he was buried, according to his wishes, right next to his wife, the late Lena Moy. The final ceremony of lowering his body into the ground was overseen by Bishop Silas Yego. And many Kenyans discovered <laughs> that actually Bishop Yego was Moy's pastor. You know, it is a good thing yeah, no matter how important, no matter how powerful you are, to have a pastor, to have a spiritual authority who prays for you, prays with you, etc., etc. Now, very interesting, 
Sela Siego met Moi when the latter was already president in 1984. Moi liked his preaching. And over a period of time, the two grew very close. Bishop Sela Siego had direct access into State House. And he became a very regular visitor. He would sit down with the president, they would read the Bible together, sing songs, yeah, and then pray. Now, Yego retired last year in December, but it seems he was called out of retirement yeah, to oversee the ceremony of his good friend and disciple. But let us now dive into the politics. <laughs> I'm sure most of you are waiting for that. And there was plenty of politics at Kabarak today. Let's look at the highlights. Former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Raila Molodinka, could not resist throwing a bab in the direction of Tim Tangatanga. <laughs> he couldn't. Somewhere in the middle of his very interesting speech, giving his history with the, the retired president, who has now left us, Raila pointed out that his father, Jaramogi Ginga Odinga, grew up in poverty. Jomo Kenyatta grew up in poverty. And so, Raila Odinga said, these are not dynasties. <laughs> you know who has been talking about dynasties and how dynasties should not be allowed to rule Kenya. But the real attention grabber at the funeral yesterday politically, that is, was Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. Colonel Secretary General Nick Salat, oh yes, the man of Ndani, Ndani, Ndani Kabisa fame, was master of ceremonies. And he said, yeah, after Rayla had spoken, that he wanted to make an announcement concerning the Kanu party. Then Salat said, he wanted to do this before inviting Deputy President William Ruto to speak. Wild, loud cheers broke out. I don't know if this applause, very loud, was prearranged. Because obviously this was not the occasion yeah, for something like that. This was Daniel Arapmoy's funeral. Hosted by D.P. Ruto's bitter political enemy in the Rift Valley, Gideon Moy and his family. And therefore, naturally, yeah, this was the place for Ruto supporters to be on their best behavior. But I want to emphasize, I don't know. I don't know if it was arranged, if it was rehearsed, or it was just spontaneous. I don't know if the people love him so much that they just couldn't help themselves. I don't know. Although in my view, yeah, everybody knows, this is William Ruto's home turf. Yeah, it's his home province, the Rift Valley. And therefore, we know he has most of his support. Yeah, his radical support must come from this province. And this does not need to be rubbed in, yeah, with the wild cheers <laughs> at the funeral of Moy. Anyway, in his speech, the deputy president emphasized yeah, that the Rift Valley was for peace and that every leader in the region should work towards ensuring that there's peace. This was a good thing to say, yeah, although it contradicts what some of his close allies have been saying, specifically about Denny Lazima Ilipwe. Or else. Now, interestingly, yeah, one of the major speakers at that funeral used the opportunity was given mainly to try and score political points, and this became very obvious during his speech. I'm talking, of course, about Kalonzo Musyoka, the Wiper Party leader. Now, as I said in an earlier video, this is very normal. In Kenyan politics, it may not be agreeable to most people, and to me it is not, but it is normal in Kenyan politics. However, what I don't understand 
yeah, and I need somebody to assist me on this channel. What I don't understand is how a senior politician like Lozum Sioka can make a speech without gazing carefully at his audience and measuring their reaction or their reactions to what he's saying and then making the necessary adjustments. How do you not do that yeah, when you're this high yeah, or people have put you this high in the country's politics? How? Yes, because you're human, you'll make mistakes. Yes, you're in politics. And this will put you in a position where you'll make many, many speeches. And of course, you're bound to make some mistakes here and there. Granted. But how do you come into a meeting of this magnitude and you're not making any effort yeah, to measure how the audience is receiving your message? How? Because I could clearly see from the looks on people's faces that people are irritated. People were getting impatient. Many people felt that what he was saying was not very relevant for this particular occasion. And many others felt that he was making it too obvious yeah, that he's trying to score political points. Anyway, that's my opinion. Now, admittedly, Although the send-off of Daniel Toriti Charapmoy has caught the attention of very many Kenyans, the vast majority of Kenyans, I also know that there are many on this channel who have been getting very bored. Yeah, they want us to go back as a country to the normal politics, popcorn politics. They want us to go back to popcorn moments. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, the funeral is now over. And the BBI fellows have wasted absolutely no time because they've already announced yeah, a major steering committee and stakeholders forum starting today, Thursday, and it'll also be on tomorrow, Friday. By the way, the very much anticipated and waited for meeting of Jubilee legislators that was scheduled for Friday has been put off. Oh, no. Well, I'm not sure what the reason is, although we all know that the party secretary general, yeah, who's critical for such meetings, Bona Rafael Tujo, is in hospital. Anyway, it just means that that drama yeah, has been postponed to another day, which we don't know yet. But we know that sometime in March, the Jubilee party will hold elections. And March is just next month. And so, unless these elections are postponed, we don't have to wait for very long yeah, for these issues in Jubilee, very major issues, pressing and burning issues, to be resolved. We really don't have to wait for too long. Anyway, the long and short of the current political situation in Kenya is that politicians are saying something like, Tume zika mze sasa. Kwa hivyo, sasa, twende kazi. In other words, it will be full speed ahead to make up for lost time. Yeah. Where partisan politics in Kenya is concerned. Yeah, and therefore those who are falling asleep need to start waking up now. <laughs> Until next time, this is Chris. Come back,